How's it going? Jasper from Number Codes here. In today's video, let's create an app with Gemini 2.0, the newly released model by Google, uh, along with Cursor, which is my IDE, GitHub, version control and publishing, and then Cloudflare for my hosting. And the app we're gonna create today is an app that I personally wanted to use for a very long time, which is to take a video of mine, uh, which are predominantly tutorial videos, and then spit out chapters for my video with clear timestamps that I can easily copy and paste into my YouTube description box. Then my viewers, you guys can easily click on them and then have quick access to different milestones of the tutorial project. Uh, it's very helpful for you guys and also gives you a very clear overview of the main things that we're gonna do in each tutorial projects I'm gonna release in the future. Now let's build it with Gemini's new API and also Cursor AI. First, I start a new repository with my GitHub desktop app. You can also do this inside Cursor or with command lines in any terminal of your choice. The goal here is to create a new project folder, which would be used as our GitHub Git repository. If you're not using GitHub, simply start a new project in a new folder in any location that you want in your computer. Then I always start my project by, then I open the project with cursor and always start my project by doing command L, which brings up the chat window. So you will see that you have chat, you have composer and you have bug finder. So I will always start with chat. And the reason why I start with chat is because I want to get the, my requirement in and the information I always include in my first prompt uh, would be first a brief of what apps, of what my app does uh, and the functionalities I need. And then I'll provide the tech stack I want to use. If I have, if I already have a clear idea of the tech stack I want to use. Uh, if I need the AI, in this case cursor and I'm using Claude under the hood, if I need the AI to suggest, to suggest uh, the stack, I will specifically ask for suggestions and I'll ask the AI to clearly lay out the pros and cons of different approaches, different stacks. And I'll also provide user stories that I have laid out, but you can skip this step if you haven't got a clear user stories or a design user flow in mind, and you can let the AI suggest it and handle it. So two important things that I will always provide here First, I will always ask for the command lines. I need to install the correct packages and dependencies uh, if we're using external frameworks or libraries. And then I will also ask for a project file structure. So the goal with these first prompt uh, is not to provide the entire detailed plan right away for cursor to execute. Uh, it is to engage, to initiate the discussion with AI. It is a starting point. Um, and then you are supposed to go back and forth with Cursor to figure out together. And you should always just review the response and then give feedback, make decisions until you're happy with uh, the plan that you and Cursor come up together. Once happy, you can ask Cursor to consolidate everything and create a markdown file. This way, in any point of your project, you can always refer to these uh, source, source of truth file, the markdown file, uh, whenever you feel like cursor is derailing or they are missing context when they're trying to solve a specific problem, you can always provide, add these files into the context window when you chat with AI so they have a better idea. Then because, then because I have decided that I want to use Next.js with FFmpeg library for video processing and also Gemini for generative features. So I need to make sure the AI knows how to use the stack that I have picked. I'm confident that Claude is trained on data uh, regarding Next.js and FFmpeg. And I'm not sure if Claude's knowledge cutoff uh, would include the Gemini API endpoint. So what I did is I added a new doc as knowledge on cursor. So I first in the chat, I used at and then select at new doc, which I inserted the Gemini document URL. Once indexed, I can now ask cursor to reference the Gemini doc by simply at, at, doing an at command Gemini doc in the chat context window. This way I know cursor is always using the newest, most up-to-date API correctly. 
Now with the project requirement documentation ready and also the APR reference ready, I will just start the composer chat uh, to start executing our plan to ask AI to actually create folders, create project structure, create files, basically get the project done for me. I'll also specifically tell when I start that I will tell cursor that I'm already inside the project folder. So cursor doesn't think that you are just in a terminal that you still need to create a project folder or something. They, they would just create everything knowing that you're already in the root of your project folder. And then cursor would just start creating the project, creating code files, and also run command lines when needed to install the correct packages and frameworks. Then it will give you a couple commands to help you start building project and also start running a local version so you can start testing. From this point onwards, it is just a process of running the app, providing feedback, but after you test the app, and if you have any errors, you hit any errors, simply copy the error lock for cursor to solve it for you. If something did not work, but you can't see, if you go into the console log of your browser and then you can't see any error there, ask, explain your situation to cursor, ask cursor to add more implementation of like add more error logs so you can help cursor to help you debug as well. So with my project this time, a couple major key problems that I have ran into are first the Gemini endpoint or the model code name, the new 2.0 code name was wrong. Um, I had to retrieve a list of available models within curl API, which actually cursor suggested me to do, uh, to realize that uh, the flash light model that I wanted to use uh, is not available, at least not on my account. Uh, so that's why it kept failing initially. So then I switched to the flash uh, 2.0 model and it worked perfectly. Uh, and the second problem I had once I fixed the Gemini problem is that I realized the timestamps that Gemini generated are not exactly accurate. Sometimes it will actually go uh, over the actual duration of my video, which doesn't make sense, right? So I ask, so I added more prompt to ask Gemini to also spit out the transcript that they've extracted from the audio of the video I've uploaded, right? And I realized it's because the tr Gemini doesn't uh, get a very accurate transcript, which means the chapters they generate based on the transcript is co not going to be very accurate, right? So here I've tried, start trying different, so I started trying different approaches. For example, I started, because Gemini, the, the model 2.0 can take video as an input, I started trying passing video input uh, at, and along with the prompt. Um, to generate the chapters, but then I quickly realized that uh, my video is too large to be sent as an API body uh, because the maximum I believe is 20 megabytes. Uh, then I tried to compress the video, downscaling the video a lot, um, which uh, kind of worked. Uh, and I also found a good side effect of the, from doing video, which is the misspelling issue. It significantly improved the misspelling issue when generating my chapters uh, from the transcript because um, uh, by just passing the audio, uh, which is the approach I'm currently doing, um, cursor or, or Gemini, Gemini doesn't know, for example, when I say trellis, when I say cursor, when I say Claude, when I say Cloudflare, sometimes I have an accent, but because um, it doesn't have any visual input to pick up the spelling, it sometimes just take the closest sounding word instead of the actual word because a Gemini still doesn't really have overall context of which exact specific term I'm trying to use. Um, but with some visual inputs, um, Gemini can actually pick out the spelling from the UIs that I'm working with to know, okay, Trellis is spelled that way, Cloudflare is spelled that way, Cursor is spelled that way. Um, so, it's significant, so it reduces the misspelling a lot. I'm saying like 99% of the time the spelling were perfect. Um, but this is great, but uh, the downscaling and the compressing of the video is still uh, takes too long for my liking. Uh, and because my videos are usually over, uh, for the full video is usually over two, an hour long. And then even the cut down version is probably 10 minutes long. And it just takes a long time to do that, and which is kind of defeats the purpose of this tool. I really want it to be like in and out, like super fast. So I went back to audio as input and how I solved 
my problem it's i when i take extracted the audio i ask cursor to first extract the audio and remember uh, the duration of the audio file and then i pass that audio duration length as part of the prompt so gemini knows this is the duration of the audio we're working with now and timestamps shouldn't exceed that maximum timestamp right the duration of the video otherwise it wouldn't make sense with that it solved kind of solved the issue which is to a level that i'm happy with so i'm going with this approach so what i'm saying is uh, when you test out your project we try feel free to try different approaches especially in the composer tab because you can easily revert back to a previous approach very easily the checkpoint um, if you're using chat, you have to remember which files you have um, changed. But because it's a composer, the agent knows what has changed. It can revert back to the previous checkpoint. It's a very quick way for you to test out um, different uh, approaches very quickly. After I've gotten the app to a stage I'm happy with, I just committed my main branch and then published the repository to GitHub. Then I went on to Cloudflare, started a new page from my GitHub repo and published my app there. So if you wanna see a more detailed workflow going from a cursor made app to GitHub to Cloudflare, you can host it for free. Um, watch a video that I've published before that gives you a overview of the entire workflow, how I do it. And there you have it, this is the entire cut down version of the process that I've took. I have a full video of one and a half hours, which I spent on this project. Full video on my Patreon. You will also have the option to get the full source code of this project that you can download, host yourself locally. It's just use, use it locally for free. All you have to bring is your own Gemini API key, which is super cheap. Let me know what other projects that you want me to make or see me making with AI. Um, it doesn't have to be cursor, but cursor just so happened to be my weapon of choice right now. Um, so join my Patreon, join my Discord to suggest that for, for free, uh, to suggest more video topics. Follow me on Twitter, uh, X, on YouTube. Um, I'm Jasper from I'm Jasper from Number Coats. Until next time, ciao.